OK, so um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be applying a transformation. The first thing that we're going to want to do all right, is plot exactly our points. So Damon, when you're given a set of points, the first thing we want to make sure we know is you know, how to, again, graph these points. Remember, each one of these points has an x and a y coordinate. right? So we're going to create an x and a y axis if there's not already one been provided to you. So here's our y axis. Here's our x axis. Right? Now remember, then we can stagnate our points here. Remember, the negative in the left, in the left is to the negative. To the right is positive on the x axis. Up is positive on the y axis. And down is negative on the y axis. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to plot my points. But please. I'll say this again, and I'll say it nice and slowly to everybody to make sure. When you plot your points, you need to make sure you la la label them. OK? So first point is negative 7, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So negative 7, negative 1. So that point's roughly going to be right there. And that is point E. What's also nice about doing this, if you guys have a quadrilateral, or not a quadrilateral, a polygon with many, 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 many points, if you like, don't label them, then you're going to start forgetting on what you graphed. right? I can't even tell you how many quadrilaterals I've seen that they look like this because students forgot to label them, and then they just started connecting them all over, and they doubled them up. Yeah, I know. It's, that's right. It's not even a quadrilateral, right? Or a polygon. All right, so now. Here we have E. Now let's go to F. F says negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's F. G is negative 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, negative 1. And then we have, all right, that's it. So we have a triangle. OK? So then we have a transformation vector. Why do I know it's a transformation vector? I can see. That you guys can see how the difference of the parentheses are the gigantic. So that's going to be our transformation vector. Now, what exactly does this tell us? 2, 5. If you guys remember, all we do is we take those vectors, right, and we add them to our coordinates, right? If it's negative, you add the negative, which would be the same thing as subtracting. But you take this transformation vector and you add it to each one of our points. So what this is really telling us to do is to shift our image two units to the right, right? Because if it's positive, it's going to shift to the right. If I had negative two, that means shift it two units to the left. And then five tells us to shift five units up. Now, if you guys just want to take each one of these points and just go, hey, here's G. Let me go two units to the right and then five units up. One, two, three, four, five. That's a very easy way just to find the new vector or to find the new point, the image point. Just find g and then find the transformations, shift over two, up five. You can also go ahead and apply the transformations. e prime is going to be negative 7 plus 2, comma, negative 1 plus 5. Uh, f prime is going to be negative 4 plus 2, comma, negative 4 plus 5. And g prime is going to be negative 3 plus 2, comma, negative 1 plus 5. So therefore, my new points, could you just leave that up there, please. So therefore, it's going to be um, negative 5, positive 4. Over here, I'm going to have negative 2, comma, negative 1. Here, I'm going to have negative 1, positive 4. OK? Does everybody see that? So those are going to be your now e, f, and g prime, which you guys can see, g prime just for me moving it over to up 5, does that give me the point negative 1, 4? Negative 1, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's really the exact same thing. You guys can apply your vector from each one of these points and shift them to the new one. Or you can use the algebra to find the new points and then just replot them. 
So f prime is negative 2, negative 1. And uh, g prime is going to, or I'm sorry, that's g. No. E prime is, so g prime right there. f is negative 2, negative 1. That was f. I was right. And then e prime is negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, that's positive 1. No wonder. I was wondering why I got that wrong. That's f prime. And there you go. Now you guys can see the transformation of the graph. OK? Good. All right, you know what? I'm not going to do two examples. I think